Welcome to our live training session here with our Subaru STI. We're going to learn how to calibrate and tune this vehicle using our VCM editor software in conjunction with our VCM scanner software from HP Tuners. Let's jump into some details about this vehicle. We're going to find that it has a Cobb SF intake installed. We also have a 3 inch turbo back exhaust. In addition to this, we have a three port boost solenoid. The engine is internally stock. The fuel system is going to be stock. And we also have a stock top mount intercooler. This is a basic bolt on Subaru STI application here. And we're gonna learn how to calibrate it from start to finish in both mass airflow air calculation mode and speed density, as well as taking a look at how to dial in our spark timing and our boost control. We have a lot to cover. Let's jump into our live training session here so we can learn how to create our base calibration file to get our process started. Welcome to our live training session here with our Subaru SDI. We're going to be learning how to calibrate and tune this using our VCM editor software. Let's jump in right now and let's take a look at creating our base map. This is the first step in getting started with your calibration process when you're using your HP tuners trying to calibrate your Subaru. So first thing we need to do is power on the vehicle. I'm going to turn the ignition key to the on position, but I'm not going to have the engine running. So we need to make sure we're um, going to do this read process with the engine off, but the power on the car fully on. Let me do that right now. I'm going to hit the button here twice. The vehicle is powered on. And now I'm going to go up here into the read option. We can see our icon right here, read vehicle. Now, before I do that, there's some things I want to mention. First thing that I have the latest version of the beta software for the VCM editor and the VCM scanner software. That's important. You need to make sure you're using the beta version of the, of the software. You don't want to use the regular release version specific with the Subaru platform. So if you're used to using um, the HP tuners with the VCM editor and scanner software for Dodge, Ford, or um, GM applications, you may not be using the beta. You have to use the beta when you're tuning and calibrating with the Subaru. So that's first and foremost. Second thing, you need to make sure you have a reliable internet connection. Um, in the case of doing any flashing to the car when you're going in and working within the VCM editor specific for a Subaru application, um, the MPVI2 cable has to go in and be connected to your laptop. doesn't necessarily have to be connected to the vehicle if you're just reading and opening a file up, but if you're flashing a file or you're opening and reading a file, the, MPV, the MPVI2 cable has to be plugged into your laptop. You have to be on a wireless network or an internet of some sort so that it can ping the HP Tuner server and check to make sure that the file itself has been defined. You may run into a problem if you do a read on the ECU. It may show you that the definition isn't defined and you have to contact support at HP Tuners. In that case, you'll have to email, email them the file so they're able to go in and add the definition. So next time you go in, if they say that the definition's been added, you can go and open up the file. It'll go in and open up and it'll display properly in the software. So in this case, this particular vehicle, um, the file has been defined. Um, I've checked it ahead of time. I know that it's all good. I've also licensed the vehicle with the four credits from HB Tuners, which costs about $200. So I've applied that already. We've covered how to apply the credits and doing the proper file saving and opening procedure in the main training course. We're gonna go over some of that just real quickly here, but the licensing I can't illustrate because again, we applied those credits already to this particular vehicle. Now, just a word of, uh, a word of caution with the credits. If you're going in and you're applying the credits to your MPVI2 cable, that cable will be married or paired to the VIN number of the car. You can take that cable and use it on many, many cars. It doesn't matter if it's a Subaru or GM or Ford or Dodge. That's the beauty of HB tuners. You have the, the ability to move through all kinds of different platforms using just one single cable. But if you're taking another cable, let's say um, you have a client's cable and they want to go in and, and pair it to the car, well then you're going to have to go in and pay the crediting again. So each time a new cable tries to write to the ECU, it has to pair to the VIN for that cable and then it has to go and apply the crediting again. So it's a little confusing with HP Tuners crediting, um, just so we're very clear of how that works. I've already, again, applied the credits. I paid for that ahead of time. Everything is ready to go here. So we should be able to do the read, and then we're gonna go in and save it immediately. So we need to go and save the original files, original, and then go in and quickly rename it again so we don't overwrite or save on top of that original file. Super important, because if you wanna put the car back to stock, we have to have that original equivalent in order to do that. So let's do that right now. So my ignition key is powered on here. My MPVI2 cable is plugged into the OBD2 port, which is also plugged into my laptop. And now if I go to the top of the software here, we have a read button. We can see here, it's gonna show read vehicle. I'm gonna click this button, and then we can go here and just simply click read. Now this process is gonna take a few minutes to do the read. We're gonna see it's submitting a request to the HP Tuner server, so you do have to be on the internet to be able to do this read process. 
and we're finding here that it's reading and it's gonna take about a minute here. So we're gonna be patient and allow this to finish the read. Again, we're gonna save this as original and then immediately over save it as a new file name so we don't overwrite this original read file. I cannot stress that enough. If you don't save the original, you will not have a copy of it. So make sure that you do exactly what I'm doing here in the, the tutorial. So you're gonna make sure you have that saved in a safe spot, even back it up on a, maybe another drive or a USB stick so you have another copy of it as well. Again, because it's going to be the original for the car. Now, if you're doing this for clients, if you're doing this professionally, doing professional style tuning, you wanna go and definitely make sure that you're emailing them or providing the client the original equivalent file, even if they don't have their own MPVI2 cable to do the flashing for their car. It's just gonna be a courtesy to the customer to be able to give that to them um, in case somebody, doesn't matter, you or another tuner can return the car back to stock at another point in time, or even the client himself can return the car back to stock at another point in time. Um, so it's not gonna automatically back up the original file and then being able to put that back onto the car. It's not like a normal flash program where you have to be responsible for file management. Okay, so we can see that the file here, it has completed the read process. We can show the completed status. What I'm gonna do is create my own folder here. I'm gonna go in and in my folder directory here, so documents, HP tuners, logs and tunes, I'm gonna say new folder and in here I'll say EPA Subaru STI. And we're gonna go and save this important detail here, original. I'm just gonna save it as original. And now I'm gonna immediately save it as a new name. And this allows me to go in and make sure that I'm not going to edit or change anything from the original file. If I wanna put the car back to stock, again, that original file is key, and we wanna make sure we're having that saved and not touched and left alone as original. So we're gonna go here and immediately go to File, go to Save As, and in the same folder here, I'll call this base file. And let's click save. So pretty straightforward. Now, the next step we're gonna go and do here is go through the process of all the tabs, just going through and making sure we're calibrating and accounting for all the details for the vehicle. Again, we've covered the modifications that have been done uh, a little bit earlier in the training tutorials. You should know just basic bolt-on Subaru, common modifications are gonna be running into. Um, this would be known as a stage two style tune. Um, just bolt-ons and, and, and a proper tune on the car so it can make reasonable horsepower for a stock turbo, stock engine. So what we're gonna do here is move into the first tab called operating system. Now this is where we're able to apply an extended data stream patch. We've used this extensively in the training course. You should recognize what this is going to be. This allows us to actually uh, log in the VCM scanner all of the Subaru specific PID channels that allow us to see what is going on with the ECU. If you don't apply this patch, you... Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.